Recently, I used AI to design a Weizenbach recipe, brewed it up, and in our evaluation, it's done a fantastic job. But could a human expert do better? To find out, I've recruited BJCP Grand Master Matthew Herald from Mean Brews. He looked up award-winning Weizenbach recipes, crunched the numbers, and came up with an award-winning recipe of his own. I'm brewing that, then I'm taking both beers to a tasting panel of brewing professionals. They knew nothing about the origins of the recipes and were simply told to pick their favourite. Did they prefer the AI recipe or the human one? For that matter, which did Matthew prefer? AI did well. This is a good beer as well. It's AI versus Grandmaster. Who will win? So to make this a fair comparison, I'm brewing both beers on my claw hammer system. I brewed the AI recipe first using the GPT-4 AI model in ChatGPT and asked Matthew from Meme Brews to come up with his recipe using his unique approach. I did find 30 dark Weizenbach recipes. Uh, we had six best of show, 14 gold. Here's the recipe distribution over the years that were surveyed. By averaging these award-winning recipes, Matthew came up with his own Mean Brews Weizenbach. All right, Mean Brews recipe. And his recipe was very thorough. And I've kind of put some trip, uh, tips that I kind of talked about today about you know, just watch the mash and, and things like that to hopefully give me an edge above and beyond what uh, a computer can say to do. Hopefully I can inject some of my experience into um, being able to successfully brew this beer. Check out the video on the Mean Brews channel to see how this came together. And for me, with recipe in hand, it's time to brew it. All right, let's get this mammoth brew day on. First things first, I'm gonna add my water salts. Following directions here on what to add in with this. Now I have many mash steps and I'm starting at 108 Fahrenheit or 42 Celsius. I have it set just a degree or two above that so that when I add the grains, it maintains that temperature. This is the Fiulic acid rest and um, I guess I should get some grains. Here we go, let's get these in. Now the purpose for this mash rest is to activate an enzyme that's gonna work on the fulic acid here to provide a conversion that will create a compound that will really emphasize the clove-like qualities of this beer that it's gonna get mainly from the wheat. So you often get a clove-like flavor of a lot of wheat beers that use Hefeweizen, Hefeweizen style yeast. And this mash rest should really help accentuate that. I'm just gonna hold this here at 108 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. All right, that's been 10 minutes. I've now ramped up the temperature to the protein rest, 127 Fahrenheit. Now, if you're thinking that this looks a little bit light for a dark Weizenbach, you would be correct. This is too light, and that's because I haven't added my roasted malts yet. They're in here. Now, the reason for that is because I wanted a higher mash pH for that last mash rest to extract the most amount of ferulic acid. And now I've done that, it's time to add those in. So here's my roasted malts, and I also have my acid adjustment. This is lactic acid. I'm gonna add this in now as well. That's looking more like dark Weizenbach color. Oh, smells really good too. Okay, consulting my notes here for the remaining mash schedule. So I'm gonna hold this at 127 Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna move on to the beta rest. That is 146 Fahrenheit, that's for 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna raise up to 154 Fahrenheit for the alpha rest and hold that for 45 minutes. Then I'm gonna to go to 170 Fahrenheit for the mash out stage for 15 minutes. All right, let's get mashing. As a point of reference, the AI recipe also called for a step mash, but just two steps, 122F and 152F. At last, the mammoth mash is finished. Time to get the grain out. And uh, one thing I do know about wheat beers is they really absorb a lot of water and this grain basket gets pretty heavy. So I've got some help today. Now the instructions did tell me to check my pre-boil gravity to see what my conversion was because wheat malt can be quite hard to convert and I found that situation with my previous Dark Weizenbach ChatGPT beer it actually came in 
a little below my usual brew house efficiency numbers. So I took a reading here and that's the case as well. I got a reading of 1057. Brewfather says I should be getting a reading of 1063. Now normally I just let this ride, who cares, but we care with this recipe. So what it recommends is to add some dry malt extract in to get to the expected pre-boiled gravity. So I have got here some dry malt extract. Now, how much to add? Well, I used a tool in Brewfather to tell me that. So I put in my gravity numbers and my volume, and it's told me I need about 400 grams of DME. So when I get this out, I'm gonna add in the dry malt extract to bring up my gravity and start the boil. Once I am boiling, it's time for the hops. I am using Hallertau Mittelfroer for everything. That's a 60 minute edition and a 15 minute edition. The 60 minute edition is going to be 40 grams of Hallertau Mittelfroer and the 15 minute edition is 20 grams. This will get me to a total of 23 IBU. After the boil, I chilled my wort and then added it into my fermenter. Now I've taken an original gravity reading. I'm at 1081. The target was 10. 76 so i'm five points over now remember my mash was under so i added that dme but it looks like i added too much not quite sure why that calculator didn't work but i don't think it's disastrous it's it's going to be half an alcohol percentage point now as i've been studiously following these instructions there were times where i began to think is matthew adding these in just to see if i would do them like the more ridiculous the better because i did i did them all and the one that really sent me over the edge was the yeast starter. Now I'm using a Weinstefan yeast strain and it told me to create a yeast starter for it. And not just any old yeast starter, it told me to create a three litre yeast starter and to prepare it five days in advance. I did, I did it all. But for me, when I've ever used this yeast strain, it doesn't really need a lot of help to get going but I've done it anyway. Next thing I need to do is to oxygenate this wort and I have some instructions for that. Let's see. Okay, get the wort to 64 Fahrenheit, I've done that. Oxygenate for two minutes using a stone and pure O2 at one LPM. All right, with the yeast oxygenated, I pitched the yeast and I'll be maintaining at 64 Fahrenheit until fermentation starts to slow down. Then I'm told to bump up the temperature to 70 Fahrenheit. Boy, I hope this is all worth it. Six weeks later, the beer was ready, but before I took both beers to the pro brewing folks, I asked my buddy Norm what he thought of the Mean Brews beer. Good? Yep. Okay. What do you think of the color of this beer? Kind of chocolatey looking with mm -hmm. a little bit of a red tint. That smells extremely heffy. Extremely heffy. Extremely <laughs> heffy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of clove. A lot right. of clove. Cheers. Cheers. My first impression from an aroma standpoint, it, it strikes me as a Hefeweizen. Doesn't it? It really does. So despite the fact that it's so much darker than a Hefeweizen, right. I'm not picking up much on the roasty side of things. I would almost describe the finish as almost on the bright, a little bit on the bright side. Mm. There is a little bit of a sweetness that I'm assuming is coming off the malt. Yeah, there is a sweetness. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the finish, the bright finish you're talking about. It seems mm -hmm. to be the sweetness on the end. It's, it's, it's excellent. So with that ringing endorsement, let's bring in the pros. Hey, I'm Kat Pierce. I'm the general manager of Atlantic Brew Supply. I am a certified BJCP beer judge. Hi, my name is John Samankowitz. I'm with Beer Law Center. Uh, I'm a BJCP certified beer judge. Hey, how's it going? I'm Whit Baker. I'm the uh, brew guy at Bond Brothers Standard uh, Beer Plus Food and Ancillary Fermentation. I'm uh, Advanced Cicerone and a certified beer judge. Oh, yeah, which one should we do first? The one with a lot of head or the one with no head? I'd do with the, the, the lesser head. Yeah. That, that's going to keep the, the yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it reminds me totally of banana bread. Yeah, yeah. Um, the clove smells like licorice a little bit. Anybody smell any off flavors? Yeah. No, I'm not not picking anything up that would be, you know, light struck, anything in handling that would that would throw me off. Same. It's clean. It's very clean. It's the aromas I would expect for a, a dark bites. And yeah. yeah, hops are like super, super low, yeah. if not perceivable at all. It's still got that nice, nice multi character to it. That's, you know, a little bit more complex. I definitely get the banana. Yeah. yeah. Toasty, but not roasty notes, mm -hmm. right? It's got that, that slightly um, brown bread crust mm -hmm. kind of malt malt character going on. Yeah, I mean, this yeah, is yeah, saying yeah. darker versions have a deeper, highly toasted yeah. 
Um, so that's right on style guidelines. Yeah, I'm getting caramel, uh, like yeah. medium caramel malt, medium high toast, getting some floral hops uh, in the flavor, uh, but pretty low. The body's medium low to medium where it should be There's still a little high. bit of creaminess, just a little. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do we move on to the next one? Yes. You know, the, the lacing, it, it, it does lace nicely. This one didn't lace quite as well. This one may have more wheat in it. This is a very different beer. I don't get as much banana off of this at all, no. uh, but and I do get a more more clove out of this. More clove, less banana, uh, more like almost like a sourdough character, more than like a yeah. a rich like a banana bread kind of thing. Yeah, uh, this this to me is more like a Belgian yeast characteristic. Mm -hmm. And you def definitely get on this one more in the aroma. I get more the the toasty malt. It has a totally different mouthfeel. Yeah, it's it totally, does. Yeah, it yeah. does. It, it's a lot smoother. It's a lot creamier. creamier yeah. The body's yeah. a little bit, just slightly more viscous. Whatever added, whatever added the haze to it, whether it be yeast or yeah. protein. Honestly, or I think there was like some yeah. flaked wheat or flaked oats. I hate the word drinkability. Yeah. But I could drink less of this than of that. Yeah. Just on that that mouthfeel, that filling. For, you know. for me, this is pretty neutral too. Like, a, like yeah. it could be Belgian, but it could be American with a lot of adjunct. Before we hear which beer the panel prefers, and they certainly do have a preference, I sent both beers to Matthew to get his opinion, labeled simply red and blue, and asked him which is his favorite. And I'm not gonna look, because I don't want to visually bias myself, so I'm gonna close my <laughs> eyes. You have not made this beer, your recipe. I do have a, a friend, her name is Stephanie. Uh, they have made the Mean Brews version and entered it, and it scored 43 uh, in competition, which is an excellent score. I get a lot of banana, a lot of clove in this one. Right mm -hmm. to style. Smells smells delicious. Yeah, that smells good. Smells like a Weizenbach. Not so much. Uh, maybe some more phenols. Less uh, less of the banana, more spiciness. Let's go on for a taste. I'll do the, the blue one first. So I'm not getting as much banana as I was on the aroma. It's definitely in the style. I would say lighter. Good beer. Let's try the red one. I would say they're pretty dang darn close. This has even fewer esters. Yeah, it's just a less intense version of a Weizenbach. Um, I prefer the blue one. Um, I think this is a mid mid to high 30s after tasting it, let it settle a little bit. This one is low 30s, high 20s. Is mine the blue one? Am I right or wrong? You are 100% correct. The okay. blue is your recipe. Mean Brew's recipe. Red is okay. chat cheap. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I did well. This is a good beer as well. But I'm glad mine, I think mine's better, you know? <laughs> so you gotta tell me, what did everybody else think? So in terms of closest to style, which do you think is closest? I think I gotta go with this the one, one, only because the, the characteristics presented by the yeast are closer than yeah. this one. Yeah. And then so preference to drink. So also the same also one. This one. Same one. So uh, I brewed both of the beers. Mm -hmm. One of the beers was created by uh, a home brewer. The second beer yeah. was a recipe made by ChatGPT. Oh, it's AI beer. Wow. That's okay. insane. So did you use the same yeast? Was it like, yes. what top out? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, were they hit the same temperature, same high crowds in time? Like it seems like this no. one was a less of a good fermentation than that one was. So the Average one mm -hmm. went through like a five day yeast starter program, and ChatGPT was not as picky, and it was just like throw the yeast in. Oh. oh! So, fun fact uh, when you do a half of bites in, all those flavors are growth hormone or growth flavors. Like, so that's why your ChatGPT recipe is better on fermentation. That we were saying is because if you make a starter, you have more cells, and for things that are Belgian or like a uh, half flavor where the yeast is sort of the driving aspect of the beer style, you actually want to pitch the least amount of yeast possible to get a stress fermentation to make those flavors. The judges preferred the chat GPT beer. Oh, really? What? Well, and maybe because this is mine and I've had it before, I know that I like it. <laughs> that may be a bias that I have, but. Well, thank you, Matthew, and thank you, beer judges. I think we can say the AI recipe held its own, but preference is, as ever, subjective. So we've got the Chat GPT beer in the tulip glass, yep. and then the Mean Brews beer here. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference as to which beer you enjoy more? I actually enjoy this one more from a flavor perspective. Um, that one is a more enjoyable beer to me than this one. Having said that, there's nothing wrong with this beer. This beer certainly is is a quite quite drinkable, and uh, 
I think that there's people whose you know palates will appreciate this one more than this one.